Hi guys, welcome or welcome back. My name is Heaven and I'm a stay-at-home mom, wife, and homemaker, but I'm also a homeschool mama. And so today I'm going to be sharing my personal review of the Good and the Beautiful Kindergarten Curriculum Program. I'm not gonna waste any time. I am just gonna go ahead and then jump right into it. And then at the end of this, I will just share some of our general homeschool updates with you guys. So this time around, I did go ahead and print the curriculum. And for me, that cost it with the spiral bounding and adding a back cover and a clear front cover. I had to get two books because the curriculum itself was really thick, 340 pages, and where I went they didn't have spiral bounds that were large enough, so I ended up spending $20, $10 per book. So would I say that I saved any money? Well, no, <laughs> because I ended up also still having to purchase the reading booster cards that comes with the kindergarten curriculum as well as the reading booster books. And I believe just the cards and the books together was about 40 bucks. But if you purchase the whole curriculum together, I believe it's about $65 in shipping. So in all, I kind of ended up spending the same amount of money. So the reading booster cards has some sight word practice, and then it also has like some sentence practice and some letter blending. In the beginning, it tells you how to use the cards, and then it also tells you everything that you need to have mastered before you actually begin the curriculum. I do recommend that you do try and master the things that they tell you to do before starting the course because it's going to make going through the rest of the course easy. I know that a lot of people were saying that they didn't have to do like some of the things that were mastered because they were pretty difficult to catch on to which was like the blending of the two letters for instance this page here that has like sa, se, si, sa, sa and then there's an additional page that you have to master before the course that is similar and my son also struggled to get this right away as it was pretty new to us but after about two weeks of really practicing I mean he had gotten it down so easily and I do think it helped us to get through the rest of the course easier do I think he would have been able to get through the language arts course without mastering that I very well do think so but I think that this just made it so much easier aside from that again it does come with the reading booster books and this contains 20 books that has CVC words sight words word family words ending in ch, th, ing, sh, and just things like that. And they're super short, about five pages long, and easy enough that as you go through the course, eventually your child will be able to read these books to you. This course also recommended that you purchase two additional books. One was a geography book, and I'm not sure what the other one was. I didn't purchase them, but I am gonna go ahead and do it because they were pretty cute. But at the time, I was honestly trying to just dive right in and save money initially. And it wasn't a requirement. It was kind of just like an optional add-on. Here is unit one, the book that I printed out, but this is exactly what the cover looks like of the book. And then this is what the back of the booklet would look like. So maybe the actual booklet will look a little bit different, but I'm pretty sure it's not gonna be too far off from the same way it looks printed out. So there are three units, and at the end of each unit, there is a review. Unit one is lessons one through 38, and then there's a unit one review. So that would be lesson 39. Then unit two has lessons 40, through 79 and then lesson 80 is a review and then unit 3 has lessons 81 through 119 with lesson 120 being a unit review we have gotten through unit 1 completely we haven't started unit 2 or 3 I've only flipped through it so I am going to do a separate review once I complete unit 2 and then another review once I complete unit 3 and then one full overall review I wanted to go ahead and get it out for you guys now so that if you're going to be starting Starting the Good and the Beautiful Kindergarten curriculum going into the school year, which I know a lot of people start at the end of August or summer, then you'll just kind of have an idea of what to expect in case this is one that you're considering purchasing. And we began this at the middle of June, so it took us about a month and a half or yeah, about a month and a half to complete unit one. I anticipate that the full curriculum, the language arts curriculum, shouldn't take any more 
than five months, but it kind of just depends on you. We took several breaks within unit one and we still managed to complete the unit within about a month and a half. So I anticipate four months in total. The hope is that we will be completely done with the kindergarten curriculum by the end of 2023 and then starting the first grade curriculum beginning of 2024. And because he's only four years old, in kindergarten, even preschool, even first grade, the lessons are not very long. So it's only gonna take up about an hour, two hours at the most, and sometimes even less than an hour to complete a full lesson. Once you really get the hang of it, you might even finish a lesson within 30 minutes, 45 minutes. And so to me, that doesn't take up a huge part of our day, that's just our personal schedule as a stay-at-home mom. I don't have to leave the home. So it didn't hurt for us to continue going through the summer. And that way when we take like breaks throughout the year, I don't have to worry about trying to catch up with the other students like in public school systems or anything like that. Not that I ever would recommend like comparing yourself to students in public school or you know any student or family at all because that's the beauty of homeschool. So, this is how large our unit two and three booklet is. So we're gonna be beginning this one when we return from a trip that we're gonna be taking next week, sometime the end of August, beginning of September. And then we'll work our way through that September and October, and then November, December, do unit three, and then finish up there. That's the goal. The language arts curriculum covers phonics, writing, reading, grammar, and punctuation, spelling, literature, geography, and art. It has letter blending, vowels, and spelling. And and it's really just a beautiful curriculum as always. The things that I really like about it is how easy it was for my son to really grasp the concept of sounding out words and reading things and correlating how a sentence matches like a picture that you see in the book and put two and two together. I was new to this going into it. I was kind of worried starting out to teach my son how to read. But at four years old, he just turned four in April and we began the course, the kindergarten course in June and just a few weeks in he was sounding out words pretty easily and it was a rough start so if it seems rough in the beginning for you just hang in there it's gonna get better just keep at it and if you have to pull up like a video to correlate with it pull up a video the good and the beautiful has some videos and then you can also just search for other learning videos fun interactive learning videos on YouTube as well that helps us sometimes if we get stuck or we'll just pull out like a little Montessori puzzle or something like that I love how short the lessons are every once in a while you will come across a lesson that's like three pages long and I even just got one at the end of unit one that was like four pages long but it, didn't, it still didn't require too much work but all of unit one the lessons were no more than about two pages long and they were all pretty simple and didn't take up a lot of our time so that I didn't have to worry about losing him and trying to bring him back it left some time for us to do other things like hands-on learning and fun interactive activities now this course did not come with a folder packet of activities like the preschool course did, but there are some built-in activities on some of the pages. Like this one here is like some type of spider activity that you do, but it's inside of the booklet, so everything is just right here, right where you need it to be, and then you would cut out these columns of spiders, and that's like an activity in itself. There are also like some activities in here that you can do where you notice how you have some things on hand such as this one here a spelling rainbow it looks like a pretty fun activity that you can do it's just paper plate a piece of yarn white glue cotton balls scissors and a hole punch so not a lot of things so of course it didn't come with an activity folder but there are some built into the curriculum itself and then there are others that you can go out and purchase if you you know if you like and I like that because we didn't use all the activities that came with the preschool activity folder because we kind of just like to do our own fun learning activities especially like some of the Montessori learning puzzles and things like that. Another thing that I really love about this curriculum is that it does come with the reading booster books and the reading booster cards because I thought that we would need to purchase some reading booster books so I did go ahead and purchase the Bob's books kit as well as some hooked on phonics reading books but it wasn't necessary these are very well good enough and they work pretty well and he catches on to them they're really pretty and then the reading booster cards also has like sentences that they can read but first it'll like practice like the letter blending that's gonna be needed to blend the words that are in those sentences so it kind of just flows and just progresses really nicely and fits right into the curriculum the books 
books are really nice. They're small. My son enjoys reading them to me or sometimes he'll read them to his dad or he'll call like my mother and read them to her. They are pretty simple. They are numbered so that you know, you know where you are in the curriculum and in what order you should be reading them. But as you can see, they're so easy concepts that you progress on as you read the book, as you go through the cards, and as you get through the curriculum. It also has some lessons that you would do in their apps. So the Good and the Beautiful Homeschool app as well as their letter titles app. Every once in a while it will tell you to go on there to complete a lesson, either like a spelling lesson, a reading lesson, a geography lesson. And then they also tell you that you can do bonus work at the end of the lesson or at the end of the day before bed, which is it'll tell you like to go watch a video or listen to a song or listen to a read aloud book. So there are a lot of different options depending on how you like to learn. I personally, I would rather keep like the interactive tablet type activities out of our learning and just do some hands-on activities, not using the tablet, but I do like the songs and the read alouds that we can just put up on our projector screen. So, you know, it just depends on what you want to do and how you like to go about it. I do recommend that you still try the apps, even if it's not for you, because even though it wasn't for me, my son, he kind of just caught onto it very well and he enjoys using the tablet, even though I get a little, I don't know, antsy about it. I don't even know why, <laughs> but I guess it's because I feel like I'm just grabbing at so many things here and there. When I put something up on a projector, I can just click it, turn it on, and then prepare for the rest of our lesson of the day. But when I'm grabbing like the cards and then I got to switch over to the books and then I got to switch over to this and then I got to go and pull out the tablet too and then I got to get our activity ready. I feel like it's just too many manipulatives. Um, for me personally, I would rather just say, hey, we're done with the curriculum, put the books away, and then go sit down and play a game or do a puzzle. Something like that is how we've done it in the past. But the great thing about homeschool is that you tailor it to your specific needs. Another thing that I really love about the language arts curriculum is how through unit two, it has like a chapter storyline book, kind of. So each lesson is a new chapter that you're reading through like this book. And I love that because it kind of just introduces like the whole chapter storyline book concept. And at the age of four, you know, I think that's great because not only do we get to save money when we do chapter books, because I'm not having to buy a new book every time we read through them all and we get bored. If you just, you know, start you reading chapter books, you can read a chapter to your child every night before bed. It's a gradual storyline. And I think it's like a wonderful way to get into like creativity, imaginative, um, like fiction reading and just, I don't know, really spark their interest a bit more when they like kind of can connect to characters in a storyline, if that makes sense. It's like watching their favorite television show, but without the screen time because it's in a book, you know? They can find the characters that they really like and resonate with just like they would do if they were watching TV. So I really like that they have like a continuous storyline kind of chapter book inside of here. And it's really creative and it's, it's really cool. There are also songs and poems that they encourage you to do at your child to remember so that they learn how to like memorize poems and memorize songs at an early age. And that has been fun. The poem is Christian based and I love it. It talks about how God created like all the things and how we're thankful that God created these things, you know. So if you are, if you have like a religious background or you prefer like a secular, you know, curriculum choice, then that's something to keep in mind. I like that it has some Christian concept built into the curriculum and it's, it's really not a lot. We still have to supplement with our own Christian learning and you know, that's just something else. So it's not a whole lot, but it's, it's in there. Just, you know, something to keep in mind of. Things that I don't like for the language arts course, it's not much. There still isn't any type of name practice in the curriculum itself. I haven't come across any yet. Just skipping through the pages and going through unit one. It is a little bit, very little in the handwriting course, but in the language arts course, there isn't any, like there's not a specified line for it. And even though there are some places where to tell you like to memorize like your family's address or your family's telephone number, there's still not a line to write their name. So I just tell my son at the end of each lesson or at the beginning of each lesson to write his name at the top of each page. And I just draw a little line for him or there'll be a line at the top of like the title of the page. And I'll have him write his name there 
and that's how we do the repetition for like his name writing so that he doesn't forget it and so that he knows every time he's doing a lesson to write his name at the top of the page so it would really be nice if they would incorporate that you know into the curriculum I don't know if they do it at a later date maybe they do but I want to say that that's probably the only thing that I don't like about the curriculum. There was nothing else that I found that I dislike about the language arts course. With that being said, I'm going to move on to my thoughts on the handwriting kindergarten course. The book is still pretty flimsy. Last time this whole thing came off, this time, well, my son ripped it off, which can't blame the curriculum for that. But I don't know. I, for one, just, I kind of don't like the size of it. I just, I think it's too small. I wish that it was larger and not like a half page size I just I, me personally I don't like that but it has like uppercase and lowercase letter it has some coloring some drawing rewriting like and drawing a picture that you already see the numbers that they practice it also has like in the beginning a handwriting chart in case they need to use it to reference any time in the handwriting course or any time in the curriculum if they need like some type of reference it's really pretty straightforward there are some mazes in here there are some boxes where it will tell you to just redraw what they see for instance here to tell them like there's a cloud there's a house and then redraw it in the box so that's the handwriting course I don't have too many thoughts on the handwriting course it's pretty straightforward there are some lines on some of the pages here where they would write their name it has some coloring I just personally don't like the design of the book but I don't know that's just me I would prefer like a full size book like we were using this one and I liked this one a lot I did I really liked this book I would like a handwriting book that's full size you know I'm not gonna go too far into that now I'm gonna move on to the math kindergarten curriculum which it is so beautiful this is the math curriculum and it has 118 lessons so the language art course has 119 lessons the handwriting has 100 pages and this math course has 118 lessons so it kind of ties them together if you do one lesson for language arts one lesson for math and then one page for handwriting you would kind of finish it all up at the exact same time and the math lessons are only two pages long thus far it has like a hundred chart in the beginning it has one two three units and unit one is lessons one through 39 unit two lessons 41 through 80 and then unit three lessons 81 through 119 with 20 being like the course assessment there's an assessment at the end of each unit um so yeah it pretty much tells you everything that you're going to be practicing counting one through 100 10 frames which is a new type of like I, we never did this when I was young, but 10 frames, I'll show you guys what that is in a little bit. Order of events, position words. When I say order of events, I mean like first, second, third, fourth, fifth, like that position words, put it before, put it after. That's what I mean by position words, number practice, matching, ordinal numbers, 10 sticks, plus and equal signs, tally marks, days of the week, like one more or less, shapes, spatial activities, addition practice what else triangles counting by tens right and left patterns what else counting backwards the calendar read again creating graphs estimating number patterns heavier or lighter comparing numbers pennies nickels dimes symmetry subtraction spheres 2d and 3d shapes subtraction games measuring dividing items in half so this covers a ton of things and I have no complaints thus far I'm excited to dive into all these things again we have only just been doing unit one so I'll be doing a unit two review and a unit three review and then an overall review but so far I'm really loving this here math curriculum and it also has like telling time it has like mannerism and by spatial activities i just mean like where they see something and then they recreate what they see recreating like the design and when i say like number like 10 sticks this is what i mean i guess this is how they do math these days <laughs> i'm only like 29 years old but we've never done it this way and so like they use these sticks so it's like 10 20 and what is that two yeah 22 and they just I guess use the 10 sticks I guess I don't know but that's that and then it also came with this 
really cute like math set that has number dice, equation dice, game palms, counting sticks, and then three little wooden cars that you can use to practice like adding, subtracting, and things like that. I actually have to hide these from him because they're so cute and he really likes playing with them, but I love how it kind of just helps with the lessons. And I also like that they had the counting sticks. I didn't expect it, and so I actually purchased like counting sticks and number dice and um, equation symbols and things like that. I had already purchased the set because like I didn't expect it. So yeah, like I like that there are things that I didn't know we were gonna, you know, have like I purchased our own handwriting curriculum. I purchased like the Bob books and the Hooks and Phonics and I purchased like the number sticks and the equation dice and things like that and it kind of just came with that like the, the booster books things like this you know so it wasn't it just wasn't necessary so it takes us about 45 minutes to an hour to complete everything so language arts takes us about I would say 20 minutes to do and then math maybe takes us about another 15 minutes and then we always start the day off with our handwriting and when we do handwriting I will read his devotions to him let him color a little bit and we pretty much spend about a good 10 minutes or so on that so yeah about 45 minutes sometimes longer just depending on what pace and if we have to pull out the tablet to do like the lessons in the app or if we put something up on the projector screen it kind of just goes over longer in the beginning when we first started it was more like two hours long <laughs> and that's because it took him a little bit longer to get through like the reading and things for language arts the booster books and the booster cards because it was new but after about a week it no longer took us two hours he really began to grasp everything and now we can just get straight through like a lesson we still have not completed our science curriculum and now they actually have a whole new science curriculum but this is the big book of science stories that is what came with the fields in flower science for little hearts and hands cute science curriculum and the only reason we haven't completed it yet is because when we first purchased it throughout like winter a lot of these activities you kind of needed to like go outside to do like explore the nature and it was cold here in michigan and then when summer came around we kind of had like a lot of things that we were already doing like some of the lessons would require you like plant a seed or you make like a maple syrup and talk about how it comes from the trees and then you make like some homemade waffles we already do a lot of outdoor exploring and learning and things like that i think that's part of the reason why i didn't focus a lot into it and then some of them require that you you know purchase some things or have some things on hand and so i never took the time to go through each lesson and make sure that i had everything for each lesson and we're still working on this as far as science goes but the language arts curriculum also has some geography lessons in there and then we like use our map you know and go over like some of the states like I'll ask him like where do we live and some of the places that we've already been I'll ask him to point that out and places that we're planning to go we just sometimes talk about like the map or the purpose of like a globe and like northeast south and west you know just like little concepts like he's four that is just in general, the good and the beautiful curriculum. I highly recommend it. I can't say it. I will have preferred the Horizons curriculum more or less because I didn't even purchase it. I am going to purchase the health course for kindergarten and tie the health course into it. The lessons aren't as many as the good and the beautiful curriculum. So I didn't need to start it immediately but I am going to purchase it and have it just to go along and have like a health lesson in there maybe one per week. Besides that, just fun learning activities, hands-on, doing things outside of it, dancing, singing, stretching, reading books every day. Puzzles is pretty much how we, you know, tie into our homeschool curriculum. So if you two are going to be using the Good and the Beautiful kindergarten curriculum, let me know in the comments below. Tell me what you like or dislike about it. If you have already tried it out, I would love to hear about that and if this video was somewhat helpful or you know you were able to learn a little bit more about the curriculum to make the decision of if it's right for your family or not I hope that you would give this video a thumbs up and of course subscribe to my channel for more content just like this I'm a homeschool mama I'm always going to be sharing like any of my homeschool you know reviews some of my book hauls any of like our plans like throughout the school year I even do some homeschool vlogs and let you guys see like how a typical lesson throughout the day goes for us so if you're looking for another homeschool mama that you can relate to definitely subscribe to this channel i would love to have you here but that's going to be all for today's video 
Thank you so much for watching. If you're still here, I truly appreciate you. And that will be all for today. Thanks for watching. Bye.